We've just had some bad news this morning. The equator line runs through southern Somalia and our plan was to travel across Somalia and then get to the coast where we would finish our journey across Africa. But there's been an outbreak of quite serious heavy fighting in Somalia just in the last few days. So I decided to fly as close as I could to the border between Somalia and Kenya. Somalia has no proper government, and years of fighting between rival warlords has forced Somalis to flee into the Kenyan desert. Smack bang on the equator, like the Dardab refugee camps. We're now going to try and find some of the new arrivals in the camp because of the situation in Somalia at the moment. There's been fighting there very recently. People have been coming into the camp just even in the last couple of days. I passed a weary group who had just made the long trek to the camp and were still waiting to be processed by UN workers. Where did you come from and, and why did you come to the camp? I came from Mogadishu because the fighting was so bad. Are your children here with you? I was forced to leave two of them in Mogadishu. Do you know what's happened to them? Have you been able to make any contact with them? No, I lost them in the attack. The group walked for 20 days through the desert to reach the camp. After their food ran out, they survived on rainwater. I think people have forgotten about the chaos, the crisis in Somalia. You look into their faces and you just realise that they're, they're hoping and waiting for the rest of the world to come and give them some assistance. This camp was opened 25 years ago. For the people who arrived in the early years, this is the only life they know. Fatima, who's now 23, has been here since she was six. When you think of the future, do you feel positive or negative about the future? I am always positive about my future, always positive. Do you think you'll go home to Somalia? Would you like to go home to Somalia? No, I will not. For that one, I will not go to Somalia. Why not? Will never. Why not? Because I know the problems I faced. I know my people have been killed there, so there's, I don't even have, even if there's bees, better I stay in Kenya and integrate with these people. But the refugees cannot integrate with the Kenyan population because the Kenyan government won't let them go more than 20 kilometers outside the camp. I can travel anywhere in the world. Yeah. Now I have a, this magical thing called a British passport yeah. and it means I can just travel around. Yeah. And you're confined here in this, it, it, it's almost like a prison it sounds like. Do you, does it feel it, like a prison? We, we say the open prison, that's what we normally tell to people. What would happen to you if you just carried on walking? What would happen if you wanted or tried to go to Nairobi or to a local town? You can't town? go to Nairobi or you can't go to even nearest 90 kilometer town, which is called Gariza. Because to go there, you have to use a vehicle and in between Gariza and here, there's that uh, police patrolling. So the police so will They will stop the vehicle, they will, every, they will ask everybody ID card. And we don't have that ID card, we are really busy. Fatima was knowledgeable and well-educated, thanks to the staff who run the refugee camp. And there were many more like her. It was depressing to see them all stuck out in the middle of the desert. Thanks to an accident of birth, I was lucky enough to be able to leave, to continue my journey around the world. So here we are, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right on the equator now. The line runs that away. This is the end of my journey across Africa now. And my next stop is Indonesia. And I walk all the bloody way.